Hey, it's Tom here and welcome back to the channel. So just this morning as I'm filming this video, uh, I got the chance to be a guest on the podcast of Kalichi Waba, who is a fellow uh, finance YouTuber. Uh, so keep an eye out for that podcast. I will share it as soon as uh, Kalichi is able to get that episode live. Uh, but one of the interesting things that came up during that discussion was the story of Rick Guerin. Now, Rick Guerin is actually an investor who was mentioned in the famous speech by Warren Buffett, the super investors of Graham and Doddsville. The Super Investors of Graham and Doddsville is a speech where Warren Buffett basically went through and gave the performance track records of all of the students of Benjamin Gray. Now he basically gave that speech because at the time uh, efficient market hypothesis and modern portfolio theory was really taking off and that was basically a theory that says that uh, no one can beat the market. All information that is currently available for all stocks that are publicly traded is currently reflected in their share prices. And um, anyone that beats the market basically is just a monkey flipping coins and uh, it's pure luck that they come up with those results. And Warren Buffett, by giving this speech about the super investors of Graham and Doddsville, basically said, okay, would it still be luck if all the monkeys that were flipping 100 heads in a row, as it were, uh, would it still be luck if they all came from the same zoo, if they all happened to be students of Ben Graham and follow these value investing principles? And if you happen to have a copy of the revised edition of The Intelligent Investor, you'll actually find a copy of that speech uh, in the appendices of The Intelligent Investor. And part of that speech actually gives, uh, like I say, the performance track record of all of the investors that uh, Buffett puts in the super investors of Graham and Doddsville category. Uh, and the investor that actually has the best performance track record out of all of these super investors was a guy by the name of Rick Guerin. Now, Rick Guerin, uh, his company was called Pacific Partners Limited and over a 19 year period he compounded at 32.9% per year just spectacular returns uh, in terms of the overall gain if you had invested from day one with Rick Guerin through that 19 year period you would be sitting on a 22,200% gain which is just obscenely high returns and Rick Guerin was actually an early business partner of both Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Uh, he was involved way back in the blue chip stamps days, and he was actually one of the people that, with Charlie Munger, bought the Daily Journal Corporation for about $2 million back in, I believe it was the 1970s. But Rick Guerin's story after producing those really high returns is actually more of a cautionary tale. Now, unfortunately, Rick Guerin passed away just last year, just back in 2020. But I think there is a lot that can be learned from Rick's story. Firstly, um, how he generated these massively high returns and also uh, where he really ran into a lot of troubles in the 1970s because uh, Rick Guerin kind of fell off the face of the earth in the investment world. Uh, he was right up there with Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett in the 60s and 70s. But from the 70s and 80s onwards, Rick Guerin was actually someone who was really hard to find information on. And in uh, the famous lunch that Monish Pabrai and Guy Spear had with Warren Buffett, uh, Monish Pabrai actually asked Warren Buffett what happened to Rick Guerin. And um, Buffett basically told the story that I want to relay to you in this video. Now, there is also a really good article which I pulled a lot of the information from for this video. Um, I will leave that link down in the description. It's called The Rise and Fall of Rick Guerin. And it's written by uh, a guy called Rupert Hargraves who actually writes quite a few articles on value investing and uh, Warren Warren Buffett, Monish Pariah style investments. Now firstly, let's talk about how Rick Guerin generated these really, really high returns. And um, it's basically a combination of two things. Now the first thing is he basically had the exact investing framework of many of the other super investors. So he was a value investor, he was looking to buy businesses at substantially below their intrinsic value. And he was actually one of the people in this group that really had no formal education in finance or investing. Uh, he picked this up on his own accord by all accounts he is incredibly incredibly intelligent and he was able to go out and start analyzing businesses uh, and even helping out Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett with various deals and bringing deals to them and over this 19 year track record at Pacific Partners he was able to generate really good returns from doing that but one of the things that also sort of juiced up Rick Guerin's returns through that period was the fact that he actually used debt to invest he actually took out margin loans borrowed money to allow him to invest more capital and capture high rates of return on an even larger pool of capital. Uh, and when that worked really well, like it did through this 19 year period, he was able to generate phenomenal returns on his equity by borrowing some money and kind of juicing up the returns that his overall fund was able to gain. 
But unfortunately for Rick Guerin, he actually ran into some troubles when it came to the early to mid 1970s. Now, 1970s was a period of time where there was one of the most brutal stock market crashes in history. The market was down about 70% in some cases. And the issue with that, um, particularly in the short term when you have margin loans, is that you often get forced to sell investments at the worst possible prices. And that's basically what happened for Rick Guerin. So, um, you know, if you're someone like myself that invests without margin debt um, you're going to probably get lower returns when things are going well than people who do use margin debt um, but you're going to be able to survive these dips so if all my stocks went down like 90% just hypothetically um, I wouldn't be forced to sell those investments I'd be able to, to sit on those investments and ride out that big dip in the market but when you have a margin loan and the stock prices come down that really really shrinks your equity and um, basically you get margin called and you get forced to either put up more capital to keep your equity percentage you know at, at a reasonable level or you get forced to basically cut your losses and sell out which is exactly what happened with Rick and one of the craziest parts that I find in this story is actually uh, Rick Guerin selling Berkshire Hathaway. So as part of this margin call, uh, Rick Guerin was actually already a shareholder in Berkshire and he was forced to sell his Berkshire Hathaway shares. And he actually ended up selling uh, quite a few of his Berkshire Hathaway shares to Warren Buffett. And the price when I first saw it just leapt off the page at me as like an unbelievably low price that Rick Guerin was forced to sell at. And um, the price that he was forced to sell these shares for in the 1970s was $40 per share. Now, if anyone knows anything about Berkshire Hathaway, you'll know that they have one of the highest share prices in just US dollar per share kind of terms. Um, those same shares that Warren Buffett was able to buy from Rick Guerin at $40, now trade for over 400,000 US dollars in the public market. So um, those initial shares trading at $40 in the 70s, um, by my calculations, have grown at about 23% per year compounded, about a 10,000x in terms of the share price, um, and obviously a massive gain that was just completely missed by Rick Guerin. So really this is a major cautionary tale if you happen to be a stock market investor, particularly someone looking to invest for the long term. Now, uh, mathematically, any number multiplied by zero is zero. So it doesn't matter whether you have a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars or a million dollars or a billion dollars if you put something into um, an investment that then goes to zero you're wiped out and that is basically what happened to rick gear and he put himself in a position where he was already independently wealthy um, and he was trying to continue to grow at a really rapid rate and was putting himself in a position where going to zero was a possibility because he had all of this margin debt. And the way that Warren Buffett talked about this when he sort of relayed this story to Monish Pabrai was that uh, he felt that, um, Buffett felt that he and Charlie Munger were both very confident that over a long time they would get very wealthy. They would be able to get rich. They were clearly very good investors. Um, they constantly spent less than they earned, which meant they had surplus funds to continue reinvesting at high rates. And they knew that over a long time they would be able to get very wealthy and they really weren't in a hurry to get there. And we see that when we look at a chart over time of someone like Warren Buffett's net worth. It just looks like um, your classic kind of hockey stick curve, uh, classic compounding where Warren Buffett is now worth about $100 billion, give or take. He didn't make his first $1 billion till he was 50 years old. So his wealth has grown exponentially through the power of compounding, and he was confident that he would be able to do that. But Rick Guerin, on the other hand, was in a hurry. And Rick Guerin uh, took out margin debt and took perhaps a lot more risk than he really needed to in order to try and reach some sort of end point of you know huge wealth a lot quicker than he would otherwise have been able to. Now, although I don't have exact numbers on this, um, by all accounts, Rick Guerin uh, went on after the 1970s to again become a very wealthy individual. Uh, and uh, he certainly did not have financial problems late in life or anything like that. But um, nonetheless, this is a nice cautionary tale and just another reason why uh, I think margin loans and investing on margin is quite a dangerous activity. Of course, it can work very, very well when markets are going up, um, but anytime you're leveraged and market prices come down, that can be quite a dangerous cocktail. Um, we know that in the long term, the market is a weighing machine and tends to price businesses uh, in and around their intrinsic value. So if you're able to buy good businesses that grow in intrinsic value, your portfolio is likely to grow. 
but in the short term the market can swing up and down wildly and that means that if you put yourself in a position where you can get margin called you can really get yourself into a lot of trouble even if you've invested in businesses that are likely to do very well over the long term so that's it for this video, a nice quick one today. Uh, clearly Rick Guerin was a phenomenal investor and an incredibly smart uh, individual as well. Um, but he took perhaps more risk than he needed to and he was in a bit of a hurry compared to Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Now, Charlie Munger, interestingly, actually did share some stories about Rick Guerin in the last Daily Journal meeting. So if you're interested in hearing more about uh, the sort of life of Rick Guerin, definitely go and check that out. Um, but I think for us as long-term investors looking to learn from these people that have been uh, really successful over a long period of time in the past and where people have kind of stumbled as well, I think it's a really good story for us to learn a few things from. So I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit like and hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.